what you really need to see are the circulation cells, all right? Where, you know, if, when you look at what causes those winds, well, what it is is the return of a big circulation cell. If we take the equator for an example, if, if this is the equator, all right, what happens at the equator? Well, obviously, we get the most solar energy there, we get heating of the atmosphere. What does hot air do? It rises, all right? So right at the equator itself, all right, you have areas where there is, is virtually no wind. These are the doldrums, all right, from back in the old sailing days. And what happens? The air rises. It's going up. It's not going along the Earth's surface. Well, as it rises and gets up into the atmosphere, what happens? Well, it gets up to the top of the troposphere and hits the stratosphere and starts to move out both north and south of the equator, okay? As it's up here. What happens? Well, it starts to cool and condense. So now it starts to come down. As it hits the Earth's surface, what happens? Well, some of it goes off to the north and south. Some of it returns back to the equator. That returning air to the equator, there's your trade winds right there. If we take this next cell where it's going down, all right, that starts moving out here. It's moving along the Earth's surface now. What happens? It starts to heat up starts to rise again, but as it's moving along the Earth's surface, what happens? Well, it starts moving along. There's your westerlies. Now it rises up, goes out. All right, some of it returns back here, causing your westerlies. Some of it goes farther north, and there's your easterlies again. So you have essentially three big circulation cells from the equator to the poles, and that's what drives those wind belts. It's those wind belts on the surface of these circulation cells. It's also what moves heat over the planet. You take the heat from the equator where there's an abundance of heat and through this circulation you slowly move it towards the poles. So you get some of the heat moving from the equator to the poles. Is the system perfect? No, because the temperature is not the same in every area. But it's not as drastic as it is on other planets where you don't have that type of heating.